Well, good morning and thank you for joining us for uh, these further residential rezoning announcements today. Today we are rezoning a further 255 residential properties that up until today have been classified orange. Remember that orange meant that the land had suffered moderate to severe damage and there had to be a consideration of what was the best option moving forward and all of that effort has been designed to give people um, confidence in the land that they either remain on or a clear understanding that the land that is no longer suitable for res residential occupation should be vacated. Today's zoning decisions uh, have been among the most difficult that have had to be uh, uh, completed so far uh, and we've remember been looking at over 10,000 properties across the Greater Christchurch area that were originally orange zoned. So uh, being very specific, today 42 properties in Wainoni are being zoned green, technical category 3, which means their owners can begin the process of repairing or rebuilding. Can I make the, ca the comment about technical category 3? Much is made of it, uh, but the reality is that it's, it codifies what has been practiced in many parts of Christchurch for a very long time. Uh, and there, when I say a long time, I'm talking uh, 20 or more years. What it does mean is that uh, each of those sites uh, would be advised to have uh, a, a bigger consideration of the soil types and then foundations within the guidelines produced or that will be promulgated by uh, Department of Building and Housing very, very shortly, uh, new foundations built. If their house has survived in those areas undamaged, then that simply indicates the strength of the building uh, that they are living in. 213 properties are being zoned red and will receive government offers of purchase subject to their owners being insured. Details of that are in the media packs. That leaves us with a further 653 orange zone properties that require a final decision and a further 2,100 white zone properties on the Port Hills and I'll talk about the Port Hills in just a few moments and explain what's being uh, undertaken there. The vast majority of the remaining residential orange properties, 401 of them, are in South Shore. This area presents some of the uh, biggest challenges because it is somewhat different from other areas in that it has that long boundary along the side of the estuary uh, with not too much distance between the estuary and the Pacific Ocean. But good progress is being made on getting to a decision for residents who are living in South Shore. As it is uh, for other properties still zoned orange today. 79 in the Central City, 29 in Linwood and 144 in Richmond. And I know it's been a long and anxious wait for these residents and there is most certainly no comfort in being the last batch of over 150,000 properties that have been rezoned or zoned uh, but we are now in the final stretch of that process uh, and moving as quickly as we possibly can. Some of today's newly zoned properties were previously on the boundary of green and red zones. That applies to 12 homes in Burwood, 7 in Dallington and 15 in Avonside which now become part of the red zone. I'm aware that there are other small pockets of land where there is contention over the appropriateness of existing zoning, including a well-publicised group of 14 properties in Stow Drive, Burwood. These areas will be reviewed and decisions made on whether zoning changes are required once the final zoning of all remaining 653 properties is concluded. We also said following the December 23rd quakes that we'd review our decision to, uh, uh, with regard to zoning in Parklands. Parklands was previously zoned green TC3 and we said we'd get that work completed by the end of February and we're on track uh, to announce that review in the early weeks of March. As I said earlier, there are also 2,000 100 white zone residential properties in the Port Hills which need to be rezoned. These residents have not been forgotten, but the geotechnical assessment of their land differs markedly from that on the flat. Sarah and the Council have shared responsibility for this work. 
Together, they are working on a range of issues to assess the state of the ground and the life risks these properties owners faces, and to provide advice on options to mitigate that risk. The Council has responsibility for issuing Section 124 notices or red stickers on properties its engineers have determined are in imminent danger. This is done under the Building Act and at present this applies to 530 houses of the 2,100 in the white zone on the Port Hills. As part of your media packs today you'll see a timeline of works being undertaken by both Sarah and the City Council. The Council has commissioned geotech engineers to ground truth the GNS, uh, GNS Life Risk and Rockfall Risk which is to be completed by the end of March. It's also commissioned reports on cliff collapse and landslip risk which should be completed by the end of this month. Meanwhile, Sarah has commissioned a 3D rockfall study which will be completed by the end of April. It is a study that will take a lot of known information that's been gathered over the past uh, nearly 12 months uh, in order to put it into a more readable and readily understandable form. All these pieces of work will help Council decide if it can remove the 124 notices or find other solutions for those areas that in, and that in turn will help Sarah with overall land zoning decisions. This is why the two organisations are now working together and we expect all decisions to be completed progressively by June. In other words, a number of those 2,100 houses will know before June uh, what their zone situation is. We will make those decisions as that information comes to hand but would expect to have it all completed by mid-June. I know that timeline will disappoint some residents in the Port Hills area, uh, but as with all zoning decisions, we're working to make decisions in the best interest of property owners. In particular, our interest is in protecting property values uh, as well as amenity. So those are fundamentally the announcements that, are, that we are making today, uh, and I hope that you accept that uh, we are trying to move as quickly as we can for the remaining uh, 650 odd houses orange on the flat and the 2,100 houses currently white on the hills. Happy to take any questions that you might have at this point. Okay, that all seems pretty straightforward. Um, if you've got uh, questions that arise out of the media packs later in the day, uh, feel free to call. Can I now ask the Chief Executive of CERA to give an update on some of CERA's activities? I just want to make the comment that, um, you know, CERA uh, has been criticised uh, by some people in recent days, and I think that criticism is very unfair. Um, I place big demands on these people. Uh, I ask them to do long hours, and I ask them to meet very short deadlines as much as possible. What I think we sometimes lose sight of is just how big the problem is that Christchurch is dealing with. And on that, in that regard, I think uh, the way in which Sarah has constructed itself from nothing to a very active department in a very short period of time uh, and put together uh, work streams across a range of activities uh, that are for the betterment of the city and make the, uh, greatest, take the greatest advantage of the government's very, very considerable commitment uh, to the rebuild of Christchurch is nothing short of admirable. And uh, I uh, want to commend Roger and his team for all that they're doing um, and assure you that uh, from a ministerial point of view, uh, we're very, very comfortable with the progress that is being made by the government department. Uh, now with that short advertorial, can I introduce uh, Roger Sutton? Yeah, I mean, there's an awful lot of sort of hard, difficult, almost sort of unpleasant stuff going on with some of this land zoning work that's going on. There's also a lot more sort of positive, lighter stuff that's happening out there. So I thought I'd just give you a feeling for some of those sort of things. So um, of late, we've been, we've been running workshops with people in the red zone to try and help them with their decisions about where they go, um, how to make decisions around insurance and those sort of issues. So we had another one of these workshops, which is sort of a facilitated session with people of like issues getting together, with people who um, understand the issues, who can facilitate things. We had another one earlier this week in, um, in Kaiapoi, I think 70 or 80 people turned up. But overall we've had something like um, 800 people sit down in, those work, in that workshop style 
um, to talk about how they go forward. And I think people have universally found those extremely useful. Um, going forward for the people who have today heard they're also going to, they've also turned red, we'll also be having workshops um, for them to understand and talk amongst each other um, in a facilitated way about how they can actually go forward. Um, we're also having some public meetings for those people next week um, and also all those people who are zoned red today will be getting a letter in the mail either today or tomorrow. Um, we've got a hub going at Avondale and we've had four and a half thousand people sit down and have um, one-on-one -on -one interviews, discussions with people from EQC, insurance companies, ourselves. So we've actually been, we're actually a really, you know, we do all this sort of hard public policy stuff. There's a whole lot of other stuff we're facilitating to try and help people get through these decisions and I'm very proud of the work um, my people do, but also the work other government departments are helping us with, but also the NGOs, the church groups, the Red Cross and those sort of people as well. Um, we've also got a, a facility now going in the Parklands Library doing the same sort of thing. So people in Parklands who, a lot of them with the, the issues they had over Christmas, once when they go and talk about their insurance issues and those sort of things, we've now got a, a place going within the Parklands Library as well. The last thing I was just going to mention very quickly was some of the other sort of positive things that are going on out there in the community. Some of you last night maybe went to the new Cycle Powered Cafe, uh, a Cycle Powered movie theatre on Manchester Street. Was anybody there? So this is, this is on the old um, cycle trading site on Manchester Street by um, Packenside. So they set up 10 bikes there on electricity generators and they all fed into a, um, a movie projector and they showed these cool old style movies. Um, I was there, I was peddling for a while. I think the minister was double booked last night. But you're looking at your diary in the future to see if you could attend? Yeah, I'm coming back to the slow motion films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact they had some silent movies last night to um, I was going to real music to live music, and I've actually I can't remember the last time I went to silent movies with you know with real musicians there speeding up and slowing down as the action sped up and slowed down. Well, not so. in my lifetime, Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I guess the message I'm trying to get is you know a lot of stuff has gone in the city, but there's a whole lot of other innovative things happening out there, and I know people, a lot of people feel that they feel there's you know there's not a lot to do, and there maybe there's less to do from what you used to do, but you people just have to get out there and do different stuff. And in particular, I think we have to support the people who are doing some really cool, groovy events that do actually give real life to our city. So um, I hope to see you all at the, um, the Bicycle Powered Cinema tonight, tomorrow night, and it's also on next week as well. So it's all that information on Gapfiller. But for you journos, you know, there's some really nice stories out there, and I hope you get out there and, and do some stuff. Happy to take your questions. Well, the Lantern Festival. The Lantern Festival's on this weekend. Um, it used to be in Victoria, Victoria Square. Obviously, it's not on there at the moment, but it's in North Hagley Park now. Um, so it's a really, you know, it's a really great way of getting outside with the family and, um, and celebrating the, the new year. Can I, Roger, can I ask about um, Rangiora this morning? Four businesses were closed down by Sarah. Shops. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say they're necessarily closed down by Sarah. I think probably more accurately the process has been is we've been asking businesses or commercial buildings we feel are, um, have got some, you know, where there is some seismic risk to the buildings to give us um, engineering assessments. And those people have gone off and got their own engineering assessments done in general. And then they've actually, on uh, the result of those, the people have come to the conclusion, perhaps with discussions with us, that, that they cannot remain open, that they are too much of a risk. I don't know anything about particularly about those four places, but that in general what's been happening. So that's what happened out at Sumner, for example, that, that case um, before Christmas. But I think people, people, I think everyone in this room has is aware that you know it's important that we do go through and we do identify buildings that have actually got some seismic risk, and we make sure the owners then address that either by um, you know first of all getting a report done, and if necessary then closing up. It's Warwick in the back there. Yeah. Warwick, is that? Do you know about the Rangiora? But in general it's been that the owners, there's been an engineering assessment done, and the engineering assessment meant that it's come back well below code. I know that the council has, um, right, come up yeah. forward. This is, this is a right. Thanks for the media training, Harris. Um, I know the council has undertaken some work with building owners and they've identified some buildings that are in fact earthquake prone, so it may well be that that's, they've taken a further step now with those buildings. 
and, uh, and close those particular ones. Yeah, we'll get back to uh, yes. okay. you, you don't know how many in Rangiora are um, fall into this category? Sorry, you don't know how many in how many buildings in Rangiora fall into this category? Oh, I think it'll be between perhaps uh, 20 and 40 perhaps in that order. So it's in the Wyomack district obviously, yeah. And of those 20 to 40, how many have been closed? Oh, I have no Is idea. No, no, I don't know. Something for the so we, we can find out. You should go, so I think it's about, Wymac have been very active mm. working. I think you should go back and talk to Wymac about that, huh? Yeah. 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 Alright. Right, any other questions before we wind up? Well, look, as everybody knows, I've been reluctant always to put timelines on because you just need the time to dot your I's, cross your T's and make sure that you're very, very confident about decisions being made. And uh, my other point today was that uh, as we get to the end of this, they are the more complex sites that, uh, that do need to be considered. And I have acknowledged that South Shore is particularly uh, challenging um, and uh, you know we want to be confident about uh, a, a decision that's made there um, and I can't even hint which way that goes but there is no preference at this stage for um, uh, a, a particular colour to be applied to that part of the city uh, we just simply need to keep considering information uh, and in that regard uh, it's proximity, proximity uh, to the 23rd December earthquake epicentre uh, is, is relevant. For residents in the hill suburbs, um, you're probably aware that the insurance cover for many of them is about to end. Um, where is the uh, government going to cover them in that case, seeing that we've had, the um, time? We've had uh, accommodation assistance available on a universal basis uh, since uh, March of 2010, uh, 11. Uh, so people are open to that. Uh, the assistance available is, I think, up to $330 a week, depending on your circumstances. And, and it is universal. People need to know that. There's no, no means test, no issues. Are you concerned at all that some may just have to return back to their homes at, at times of time? Well, well I, th I think um, the, the point I'd make here is that um, uh, we, we can't let an uh, insurance company deadline uh, drive a process that's going to uh, ultimately determine the value of that entire suburb for decades to come. Will Orange stay, will Orange stay Orange? I mean, will Orange be a colour at the end of the day or will, no, it won't be a colour? No, no, no. It'll be either um, green or red. Mm. We've deliberately used that traffic light system to, to convey that message. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for your attendance. I hope that uh, we can have more to tell you at our next gathering.